Hey Bible lovers, I'm Tim Nichols and I'm here to give you a little bit of a different type of Nichols worth. This is segment two with Daniel and I'm going to pick his brain about the future of Humble Lamb and what he sees on the horizon, what secrets can he spill about their future and what is he unwilling to talk about. That's one thing about publishers that I've learned is they all have their secrets. They all have their reasons for their secrets. But before we dive into that, and I am comfortable going on record to say this, I work with a lot of publishers. I've met with a lot of publishers. I've had meetings with a lot of publishers. If they publish Bibles, I love them. But when it comes to raw innovation, to someone who thinks outside the box, for someone who your boundary measurer is broken, you remind me a lot of some of these custom rebinders that just do things and it's like, you can't do that. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. And they do it. Yeah. I think of the yellow Bible, being dead honest here, first time <laughs> I saw it, I was like, that thing is ugly. Now I have one. And I absolutely love it. And it is one of the center talking points of my office now. It's like everybody, whoa, yellow Bible. <laughs> and it's just, who would have thought that would have worked? Pink. As a matter of fact, at the last interview, you were like, I've got this secret. And you know, <laughs> it's a secret color. And you showed it to me. And I was like, okay, <laughs> pink. And they're yeah. sold out. Yep. People buy them. And not just the colors, you're not just, you're not just color guy, but the design, the, the full color drop caps on the history Bible and the single column story format mm. on the history Bible. Even the very first Bible you made, the, the shepherd with the blue drop caps and the words of Christ in blue, you weren't the first person in the history of ever to do it, but you were the first person that was in print to do the words of Christ in blue. Then we look at the lion and the foredge and the really super dark art gilding and all these things that just makes Humble Lamb special. So, I just want to say kudos to you. Well, thank for, you. And praise the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Having a mind that presses boundaries and decide I'm not going to go into budget Bibles. I want to go straight into the premium Bibles because I feel like that's a need that isn't being met by a lot of publishers to where that's the only thing they offer. Now the paste off liners are a thing of the past. Yep. You have a few left. What, what yep. colors do you have left? We have uh, orange. We have yellow. And I think that's it. Okay, so some orange and yellow, which were innovative. And you made Rocky Top fans happy with that <laughs> Fox Orange. With all that said, and with the way your brain works, and, and when I'm talking to you, it's almost like I can see the fireworks going mm -hmm. off inside. What does the future of Humble Lamb look like? Are there more translations on the horizon? Are there more colors on the horizon? What types of designs do you see on the horizon? And just whatever you'd like to share with What's the future look like? One of the things I often think about is if you gave God the chance to design a Bible, how would he make it, right? I'm sure God could come up with a billion trillion ways mm -hmm. of designing a Bible, but here we've really just got one way of doing Bibles. For many years, it's always been double column. You know, if you have cross references, they will be center. Um, so it's like, you know, how can we push the boundaries and, and give a little bit of color and variety to the Word of God? Right. Um, and I'm laughing because I was black Bible, two <laughs> column, verse by verse, center column guy. And this guy right here ruined me. <laughs> yeah. So I, th I think that the future of Humble Lamb when it comes to design, I mean, it's, it's going to be huge because... We have so many options. I do a lot of designs on my iPad or on, on paper of just outlandish designs that I'm like, man, this could never work on a Bible. But then, because I have so many of them, I will come back when it's time to do the next translation. I'll say, well, what elements do I like of each design? Yeah. So it's an exercise of creativity for me mm -hmm. when, I, when I just do it on my iPad and then I'm like, can we bring this into an actual Bible? Would it work? Would it be beneficial to the customer, to the reader? Many publishers will do one design and they'll do like 10 translations for that one design. Mm -hmm. But we are doing every single translation is unique to its design. Mm -hmm. Personally, I, I want to see variety. I want to experience the Bible in a different way. It's scary mm -hmm. in a way because you, you, know, you think, well, if I spend hundreds of thousands of dollars developing this Bible, printing this Bible, and then nobody wants it, because I've been the only one that really liked it. That's scary. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a scary financial decision to make. But at least our experience has been that the outlandish designs that we've come up with, like the history that, you know, really breaks up chapters mm -hmm. and really focuses on the story have been a huge hit and people mm -hmm. love it. 
So it's it's been encouraging yeah. uh, to see that. So. Yeah. And when you first told me about the history Bible, I wasn't really grasping because you, you were talking about But when I saw it, the stories, the NASB 2020 is a great option for that because of the way it reads. Yeah. And when you think about, I've never really thought about what you just said when you design each Bible with the translation in mind. Yes. Yeah. And that's pretty cool. So you said next translation. I heard that. <laughs> So, so yeah. what are you telling us here? So we have the NLT, the Kickstarters beginning at the end of this month. And then after that, we will reveal a new translation that we're going to be doing. Okay, so after the Kickstarter. Well, yeah, it'll be probably close to the end of the year. Okay, um, so at the end of the year, there's another translation on the horizon. Yes, a completely different design than NLT. The NLT is almost ready for print. Yeah, so the NLT is currently in the process of being proofread. So once that's done, which they've already done the whole Bible once, now they're going and proofreading it the second time, uh, making sure that all the changes were done that the first review caught. So, yeah. Okay. So anything else about the future of Humble Lamb that you would want to let people know other than future editions, design? Are you planning on doing any expanded editions, any commentaries, any anything like that? So... We won't ever get into study Bibles or commentaries. I just, I know we don't have the qualifications to, to do study Bibles. So we'll just stick to Bibles and just doing the full Word of God. When it comes to translations, our goal is to do all major translations. But of course, a lot of translations are copyrighted. We mm -hmm. have to work with the current publishers of that. Sometimes that's difficult because they don't want to, or sometimes they do. And I'm really glad Tyndale was very open to us working with the NLT and I'm I'm excited. I think it's gonna be a huge hit, so. Okay, is there any possibility of any translations other than the King James that are in the public domain in the US becoming a future Humble Lamb edition? Possibly, we've looked at some, but we're not ready to share anything at this point. All right, so there you go. <laughs> I, that's all I'm gonna squeeze out of them. This has been amazing. This new building is amazing. I wanna say this again. <laughs> I've been here before, but I thought I was lost again <laughs> because you change things up on me a little bit and yep. I show up and there's a porch on the old building that used to be the studio. There's a new building there and I pull in and I'm like, am I lost again? <laughs> this place is literally in the middle of nowhere. One of the greatest premium Bible publishers lives in the middle of nowhere. And we joked last time about you having family goats. Have you ever transitioned into possibly doing goat skins? <laughs> <laughs> yeah i know <laughs> um yeah no uh no <laughs> so, so just just family pets y'all yeah so, so um, no, no custom humble lamb goat skins coming your way yeah but i will say the reason why we are out here we really enjoy country living and uh we could have an office in right in the middle of town it would probably be more cost effective but we wouldn't be able to work the way we do mm -hmm. like we work here. Like I was telling Tim uh, earlier that when the KJV Lion Bibles came in, my wife and I and my kids were also helping too. We were fulfilling the, well, it, we, they, we all helped to fulfill the Bibles, but my wife and I were up till like 2 a.m. in the morning. That's something we couldn't do if we had an office somewhere. Right. Honestly, even the bigger we get, even when we're huge, which, you know, who knows when that will be. I would still love to have my office on my property, uh, however big it may be, mm -hmm. and we just fulfill everything from our property. From yeah, so, I mean, that's something that maybe you all wouldn't normally know. And for those <laughs> that perhaps get a little frustrated because things get delayed, yeah. number one, that is beyond anyone's control when a shipment gets delayed. But number two, when you got them, you were up till the wee hours of the morning fulfilling orders. Yeah, so there's... Obviously, some things we can't control, mm -hmm. like ocean freight and things like that, delays. But when we can control it, we will do everything in our power to get things out as soon as possible. And I, I really thank all of our customers with their patience and their trust in us to really fulfill these orders like we promised we would. So thank you for that. Well, and I also think thank you for getting that done in really a sacrificial manner. <laughs> to work hard to get those orders fulfilled, staying up to two, when you stay up to two o'clock in the morning doing something, that's something you care about. Yeah. 
Yeah. And uh, I thought you all needed to see that. <laughs> so God bless you. Keep calm. Jesus on.